Today, we, like I said, we're going to be starting in a new sermon series called At Your Service. But before I do that, I have a picture that I wanted to show you. So this weekend, my wife and I were able to officiate a wedding of some of our people that go to our church here. That's Brent and Candace. It was here on the rooftop here in the city. And I just want to tell you that in this church, God is moving. In this church, there's life and life more abundantly happening. We got a couple more coming. We got uh, JR and Apple coming. They're getting ready to get married. We got Eric and Diana. They're going to be getting married. So God is up to something. Babies are being born here. You know, it's like, you get that. Where'd that baby come from? You know, it's just babies are coming. And so it's good to be in a church uh, that's fulfilling, if you will, what God said to, uh, uh, you know, to create the earth, you know, flood the earth, multiply. And so we're doing that. And, you know, hopefully some of you in here, too, will be married and have children and expand your territory for the glory of God. So we're excited about what God is doing here. Today we're talking about service. And there's a difference between the world's way and God's way. And how many of you know here in New York City, we love to be served. Let's just, just get it out of the way right now. Let's just shame the devil. We love to be served. And so here's how I know how many of y'all really want to get on that mass transit, get on a subway or deal with a, 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 you know, a bus? No, if you can't get that Uber black to take you from car to door, you're going to do it. You want to be served. How many of y'all really love going to the, oh, I just love going to the grocery store and um, fighting people, biting people, scratching people just so I can get that last, you know, peach there on the thing. You know, but no, we would rather take our phones, you know, scroll through the menu, you know what, and have that, that food dropped off at our doorstep serve how many of y'all really like doing laundry now you know good way you don't like you rather put it in the chute let it go to the bottom somebody wash that for you maybe even iron it probably put it together you know and send it back up and you're good to go man it's going in the clump good you would like to be served but in the kingdom is different in the kingdom is opposite you hear things like bless those who curse you you hear things like give and don't try to receive or take you hear things like, you know what, it's better to forgive than to hold a grudge. And so here we're going to look at the difference in serving in the world and serving in the kingdom. The kingdom is very important. And if you have a Bible, you can look at John 13, 1 through 17. This is Jesus, the feast of the Passover. And it says this. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart of this world to the father, Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Make sure you remember that. During supper, when the devil had already put it in the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the father had given him all things into his hands and that he had come to betray him, come from God, excuse me, and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured the water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet. And to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, what I'm doing, you do not understand now, but after you will, you will understand. Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, if you do not wash, if I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him. The one who has bathed does not need to wash except his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who would betray him. That was why he said, not all of you are clean. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, do you understand what I've done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash another's feet. For I've given you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is no greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. It says Jesus at the feast of the Passover, the feast of the Passover was going backwards a little bit, reminding them of what they did, God did for them as they were being delivered out of Egypt. And if you remember the story, that angel of death was going to come by and whoever didn't put the blood of the lamb over the sign of the door, they too would be die. And Jesus 
it says, was full of wear. He knew that his hour had come. Lately, it had been saying in the other Gospels that his hour had not yet come. But right now, the hour was here. He has 24 hours left to live. And right now, he's knowing, man, I'm getting ready to die an excruciating death. I'm getting ready to die on a cross. I'm getting ready to be buried in the grave. And I'm going to come back. And I'm also going to ascend to the heaven. He was aware that his hour had come. Now, I want you to ask yourself this. If you had 24 hours to live, what would you do? Jesus is at the Passover and the Passover also pointing to the future. Jesus knowing that he is getting ready to step in to the fulfillment of all the prophetic words from the Old Testament. All those prophecies that were pointing to the right now. He's now getting ready to be the Passover lamb. And it says that he was full aware of what was going on. He knew there was a man in the room whose heart had been full of the devil and is getting ready to betray him into the hands of the enemies that are going to put him on a cross. He's full aware. 24 hours to live. And here it is, Jesus. Knowing that his hour had come. Sitting at a table. And these men are Kind of an arrogant, if you will. They're, they're thinking they're all that because they're sitting at the table with Jesus. And I need to break this down because in the Passover meal, something was taking place. They were arguing at the table. It says this in Luke 22, 24 through 30. A dispute also arose among them as to which of them was to be regarded as the greatest. And he said to them, the kings of the Gentiles lorded over them. And those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, let the greatest among you become as the youngest and the leader as one who serves. For one who is greater, one who reclines at the table or one who serves. It is not the one who reclines at the table, but I'm among you as one who serves. What is Jesus saying? At the Passover meal, it was cool to kind of lay back, if you will. They was chilling. They had a lean on them. And when they were leaning, they was like, yo, 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 pass that lamb because I want some of that. Oh, yeah, yeah, give me some of that uh, uh, that, that Chardonnay. I I need some of that, too. So they was chilling. And the sign of the reclining was this. If you were reclining, it meant that you were a free man, that you were free, that you were not a slave. But if you were standing up, you were a servant, you were a slave. And Jesus, being at the table, stood up. And these people freaked out like, oh, no, what's going on here? And all of a sudden, Jesus gets up and it says this in John 13, 12, when he had washed their feet and put on his outer garment and resumed his place, he said to them, do you understand what I've done to you? Now, I want you to close your eyes where you are right now. We're talking about feet now. Now, just imagine that you're here in New York City. And it's one of those hot days. I'm talking about, man, it's in the 90s. Oh, it's cooking outside. It's so hot that that trash is starting to stink. You know what I'm talking about. It's stank out there. And you're walking around and all of a sudden here comes a downpour. I mean, it's raining cats and dogs. And you know when it rains in the city, it gets ugly. Oh, that nasty water. It turns from a little bit of clear. Now it's murky gray and it's stinking too. So now you got hot trash, hot, nasty water. And it's just, oh, it's bad. It's hot out there. Now take it to another level. Now just imagine everybody walking around outside with no shoes on. It's just feet. Oh, they sloshing in the water. They getting on the subways. Man, they're getting on buses. They're walking in places you know they shouldn't be walking in. And it's just nastiness all over their feet. And now they're knocking at your door and they're getting ready to come in your house. Now could you imagine having to step down? No pedicure. Oh, every corn and every bunion. Bottom of their feet so bad, man, you can strike a match and light it. (laughs) And you got to get down there and you got to wash their feet. Oh, you talking about humility. Jesus, knowing that he was going to ascend to the father 
and all authority in heaven was going to be given to him. He did opposite of what the world would do. He got down on his knees and he humbled himself and he made himself a slave in that moment and began to wash their feet. Because, see, slaves were the only ones that washed feet. It wasn't the ones that were serving. It wasn't the ones that were the head at the table. It was the slave. And now he's at their feet and he's washing them. See, what I love about our Jesus, he said that I did not come to this earth to be served. I came to this earth to serve. And if you're going to be a follower of Christ, you're going to have to have a mindset of serving. You're going to have to shift gears in your soul. You're going to have to shift gears in your mind. You're going to have to be able to take off the pride, take off the arrogance. Say, man, I'm too good to do this. I'm too good to do that. No, no, no. If you're going to follow the Lord, you're going to have to serve. Do you understand? Oh, this shook Peter because, see, in Peter's mind, if anybody did what Jesus did, then they're not worthy of being followed. Jesus said, no, no, no. If you're going to be with me, you're going to have to be like. And Peter was furious. Oh, this doesn't make sense. This is making me comfortable. Man, you're the king of the Jews. How can you get down there and wash our feet? But Jesus, man, he understands, man, if I'm going to go low, that means one day I'm going to be high. The Bible says this in Philippians 2, 8 through 11. And being found in human form, be, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. So that the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. See, in this moment, Jesus is showing them, hey, in my vulnerability, I'm still the Lord of the universe. In my vulnerability, I still can handle things. But I'm showing you something. If you want to reach the world, you're going to have to serve. You're going to have to be humble. We're so prideful and so arrogant, myself included, man. There's times where I don't want to serve people. I want to be served. But, man, humility does something. When we go low, God exalts you high. Lord. He says, man, if you're calling me Lord, if you're calling me master, if you're calling me your king, then now the second thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to obey. See, lordship costs. Everybody wants to be saved, but nobody wants to make them Lord. See, Lord now takes things to another level. That means I got to submit my will. I got to submit my desires. I got to submit those things that are running through me that may run contrary to the word. I got to give those to God, Lordship. Everybody wants to be saved from hell, but they don't want to make them Lord. And Jesus is ratcheting it up, man. If you're going to follow me, you're going to have to do exactly what I do. You're going to have to learn to wash feet. The Bible says this in Colossians 3, 17. And whatever you do in word and deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. How am I going to do this? Through him. See, our nature is contrary to the world. We want to do what the world does. We want to do what the world says. So it's opposite. Everything about the kingdom is opposite of the world. And the only way I'm going to be able to live a Christian life is through the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ himself in the flesh by the Holy Spirit is going to have to be right here in me because I'm telling you right now, I ain't washing feet. I'm telling you right now, I don't want to serve. I'm telling you right now, I really don't even want to obey. There's times where I don't even want to come here and preach on Sunday. I would rather sit home and watch the football game. I'm just a. But man, if he's Lord, I have to obey. If he's Lord, I got to die. The Bible says this, take up your cross. Matthew 16, 24 through 26. Then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone, if anyone come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? What shall a man give in return for his soul? Serving. You know, my wife and I, we like to travel. And when we travel, you know, we like to do it big, you know, because when we get away, we want to get away. Now, I'm going somewhere with this story, so I don't want you to think, oh, Patrick, you know, he's up there flexing, you know. No, 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 I, I want to show you something. 
So there's a moment we went to Dallas, you know, that's my hometown. That's where I was born or was raised. And so, I, you know, we go to Dallas. and I'm like, man, we're going to pick this nice five star hotel. We're going to go there and we're going to do it big. And so we get there and we pull up, you know, and, you know, normally when you pull up to a nice hotel, they come and they get your car. Right. And when you get their car, they get your car. You tip them. So I tipped them. Hey, bro, do you? Yeah, man. Thank you for taking the car. Takes and puts it up. And they ask you for your luggage. Can we take your luggage to your room? I said, no, nah, bro, I got that. But you can come with us. And, and, you know, show us around in the, in the room and let us know how things work. So come on. So he comes with us and, you know, he's kind of looking like, man, I should be carrying the bags. Why he carrying the bags? But, you know, oh, well. So we're walking up. We get to the room. He's showing me all the stuff. I said, man, thank you. Thank you for showing me how the thermostat worked, the lights work, blah, blah, blah. Here you go, man. Here's your tip. Man, I didn't even do nothing. You giving me, I didn't even, I just walked you to your, hey, here you go, bro. And so I'm serving. I'm letting them know, man, you're valuable. What you do is valuable. I see how you do things. Like you're valuable. I saw how you took care of the car. I see how you greeted me at the door. You looked me in the eye. You didn't look down on me. You made me feel special when I came through this room. There's something about you. So, you know, I'm going I'm to take care of you. And so now I go downstairs and I'm just scoping out the land, you know, just watching some stuff, trying to see what's going on. We have a little meal. But tomorrow night's the big night. And there's a restaurant in town that nobody can get in unless you know somebody that knows somebody. And I said, man, I'm trying to go eat here at this restaurant. And so I'm laughing about this because there's no way you can get in. The other thing is this. The other thing is that, man, they have a car service there and you need to get the car. But, man, there's 30 to maybe 20 people trying to get that car that night, too. There ain't no way you go into this restaurant. There's no way you get in that car. But as I'm making my appeal, there's somebody right there listening. The guy that I had served earlier before. And don't you know that when I came downstairs, not only did I have a car ready to go, but he got me in that restaurant. And so as we got in the restaurant, did our thing, came home, he's our driver for the night. And all of a sudden, my wife and I begin to minister to him because it ain't going to stop just with that. No, no, we're going to go to the next level. We begin to tell him about Jesus and what we do. We begin to tell him about, hey, what do you do? He says, man, nobody's ever asked me that. Nobody's ever took interest in me. Nobody cares that I do. All they want me to do is take a bag. They want me to help them with this, tell them to go here. But, man, you guys really taking a liking to me. Man, we're just here to serve you, brother. And as we're talking to him, man, he's edified, he's built up. He all of a sudden, he's, man, I got this business plan. There's something I want to do. My wife and I, you know what we're going to do? We're going to stop right here. We're going to pray for you right now. We're going to believe God that you're going to get that job. You're going to be able to do what you need to do with this business plan. You're not going to have to be here working at this hotel. But not only will you have a hotel, you're going to own the hotel. We're going to believe that for you, brother. We're going to serve you and believe with you. And you know something that shifted his heart? Because he saw people that always want to be served instead of serving. And that's how you and I have to walk as men and women of God. Are we just trying to get, get, get? Or are we willing to give, give, give? And as you walk that way, people's lives begin to be changed because you do opposite. The Bible says this, truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is no greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Remember, you got to do it. And once again, I go back to even telling on myself early on as a Christian. Playing in the NFL, man, I'm the dude and I'm going around and I'm doing my thing and I come into the church and I'm sitting on the front row and I want to be served, Pastor Kaz. I just want to get the word, feed myself and go home. But all of a sudden, you know, if you sit around the church long enough, they're going to begin to ask you, where would you like to serve? Have you gone to that connections course yet? And at the end of the connections course, they're going to ask you, where would you like to serve? And I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't want to. I just want to get the word and go home. No, no, no. You going to serve, brother. <laughs> and I, I'm like, but oh, OK, uh, where where would you like? Where, like, where's the need? That, that's a trick. Where would you like? Where's the need? Everybody, you know where the need is. It's your children's church. <laughs> I'm like, no, Jesus, I'm not working with no children. Oh, you going back there with them kids, brother. <laughs> and, man, I go back there. You know, I go back just kicking and screaming mad. Man, I'm like, look. You know, I ain't even in the spirit back there. I just look. Kids, ain't nobody pooping. Ain't nobody biting. Ain't nobody crying. You just sit down and take this uh, little message I'm going to give you and this butter cookie and be happy. <laughs> that ain't right. 
And so, man, you know how I'm back there one morning and, you know, I'm tired. It's just one of them weeks. And now I'm just like, man, I got a, you know, game coming up. I got to get my mind right. I'm back there with this kid and this woman comes in and that baby is hot on fire. I mean, this baby's crying, snotting. And here it goes. You're going to take this baby. And she had that look like, I got to, you got to take him. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You're going to take him and drops the baby off. Now I'm holding this thing. I'm just looking at it like. Oh, man. Die to self. It ain't about you. And this baby's hot, uh, crying. I'm just like, man. So finally I get the baby. All right, calm, on, calm down, calm down. Set the baby down. Baby's good, walking around. You know, it's all good. And then next thing I know, I look up and the service is over and the lady comes to the desk and she's weeping. And I'm weeping. To her. Get your child. Get this child. Get him. <laughs> And she goes, no, 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 you don't understand. We've gone from church to church. And every church that we've gone and try to drop our child off, we can never sit through a service because we always got to come back and get our child. But for the first time, our child stayed back here. And because of that, my husband got born again. He gave his life to Jesus. See, what I'm trying to tell you today, it ain't about you. Every time you serve, it's about somebody else. Every time you die to self, it's about somebody else. Just like Jesus, it wasn't about him. Jesus had all power and authority, man. He was God in the flesh, but it wasn't about him. He's serving and he's explaining something. He's trying to get these men to get it. Guys, you need to understand that, man, as I'm washing your feet, I'm doing something. Because I'm trying to communicate this. You think you need a full bath. But what I'm trying to say is when you get born again, you're good. You're saved if you do it by grace. And my last point is this, is you got to learn to receive. There are so many people that I come encounter with that don't know how to receive the grace, the gift, and the love of God. You got to receive it. Oh, pastor, I'm not worthy. Man, I've done so much, man. If you just knew, I don't, but he does. He knows everything you do. He knows where you've been, what you've done, what you said, what you thought you should. Know. I mean, he knows, but he's merciful and he's kind. And he humbles himself and he comes and he meets with you and I and he's willing to do that. We got to learn to receive. Don't give God the Heisman. That's football terminology for some of y'all, you know, if you're football, the Heisman. Don't give him this. Don't push him away. Keep him. Like, bring him in. Lord, I need to receive. Peter was pushing Jesus away as he washed his feet. He said, man, it's not just my feet, my whole body. Man, you don't need that, brother. You saved. You right. But the reason you need your feet to continue to be washed is because sometimes you're going to continue to walk around in this life and there's going to be some stuff you're going to step in and you're going to sin. You're going to do some stuff. But you know what? My blood is sufficient. It's able to wipe you clean. And so it's okay if you walk in the light as I'm in the light. It says that the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin and we have fellowship with him. He told Peter, man, if you don't let me wash your feet, then what's going to happen? We don't have no fellowship. See, I want that deep, Cornelia with the Lord. I want to know him for who he is. I want him to know the nastiness, all oh, the stank in my soul. I want him to know so he can go ahead and cleanse me and clean me up. And he says, man, you know why I'm doing this? Because I'm trying to teach you something. See here, there's a difference between service and volunteers. I may volunteer because I want to, but I serve because I need to. See, you need to serve because it does something. It brings things out of you that you didn't even know was down in there. Man, that selfishness, that pride, that arrogance. Man, I need to serve so I can become more like him. Volunteering may be a choice, but service is a calling. Volunteering may be a choice, but service is a calling. And how do I know you have to be called to do this because not everybody wants to do it? Calling. See, it takes a supernatural God dwelling inside of you to do opposite of what the world does, to say opposite of what the world says. 
The world says, man, post that stuff, man. Put Instagram, snap face, all that face craziness. Man, put it up there, brother. Do it, man. Get that light. Get that emoji. Oh, man, get it. Get it, man. Show the world. But you know you jacked up inside. You ain't living like that. You ain't got it like that. You ain't got no yacht. You ain't got no jet. You ain't got no uh, house in the Hamptons. You ain't. Uh, you went and visited somebody that made it. You made it, took a picture by a plane, but you ain't got it like that. You ain't got it like that. And so that's what the world wants us to do. But as a Christ follower, I'm called to serve. So if I'm going to follow Jesus, I have to do what he did. I can't be the one at the table trying to be served. Now I got to get up from the table and serve. I got to serve in my house. I got to serve in my community. I got to serve in my job. I got to serve in my family. I got to serve. And as you and I serve, it says this, man, something will take place in the people that you're serving. They're going to be like, wow, I've never seen anything like this. There's something different about that. And we have to learn to receive because when you serve, you'll be blessed. Oh, yes, you will be blessed. See, when you go above and beyond and you deny self and you get down there in the trenches with people and you live an opposite lifestyle of everybody else, man, you will be blessed. See, God will see what you do in private and honor you in public. See, he'll see that you gave up something that you really wanted to. Oh, you, you turned the other cheek. You didn't say what you wanted to say when you wanted to say it. You, you died to self. You, you, you was able to, to say, you know what? I'm not going to do it like the word. I'm going to do it like God and you will be blessed. In 1 John 3, 16 and 18, by this we know the love that he laid down his life for us. We ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. But if anyone has world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does he, God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in the word or talk, but in deed and in truth. We can talk about love and all we want. Love, you know, that's the big word around here. We love everybody. I mean, love is action. Love is action. If you're gonna love somebody, it's gonna cost you. It's going to cost to have a multi-ethnic church. It, you, you know what I'm talking about. It's going, you have to give up some stuff to hang out with people that don't look like you. It's going to cost you if you go into a profession and the profession is asking you to do something contrary to the way you're supposed to live. It's going against your morals and values. It's going to cost you. When I played in the NFL, man, they used to make fun of me because I didn't want to go to the clubs. I didn't want to go drink. I didn't want to go smoke. I didn't want to do none of that stuff. And they made fun of me. But that's all good because as long as I'm, he's happy and long as I can continue to serve my brothers in this locker room, I'm going to be all right. I'm not compromising my faith and I'm not compromising my walk. I'm a Christ follower, which means I got to be Christ like. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel and you shouldn't either. And so as you're following him, you need to do like him and serve. I'm closing with this quote. Spurgeon, if there's a position in the church where the worker will have to toil hard and get no thanks for it, take it and be pleased with it. If you can perform a service which few will ever seek to do themselves or appreciate it when performed by others, yet occupy it with the holy delight. Covet humble work. And when you get it, be content to continue in it. There is no great rush after the lowest places, you will rob no one by seeking them. Spurgeon, if you can find a place that nowhere, nobody wants to do it, go to that place. And the reason I laugh about children's church is because in children's church is where I receive the call of God. So I'm back there with those kids grumbling and complaining, not knowing that God has said I'm preparing you for something down the road. If you can't take care of 20 kids, how are you going to take care of my church one day? And so I'm back there, you know, and all of a sudden I begin to like what I'm doing. Man, I'm anticipating, you know what I'm saying? Like I play defensive back, you know, you got to anticipate <laughs> what's getting ready to happen. And so these kids coming at me, I'm excited now. I'm like, I know what you get ready to do. I see the, uh, you're going to try to sneak out the port. I'm ready now. I got the word ready. I know what you about. Yeah, you're going to cry in about five minutes when your mama drop you off. I'm ready. It became a joy and a delight. Watching those kids grow up and then you go from children's church to youth ministry, you go from youth ministry uh, into campus ministry, and you go from a campus minister to an associate pastor and from an associate pastor, you end up leading the church. And man, all that stuff started back there with the children. 
You got to serve. You got to serve. Serving produces something in you and I. And there's a difference between serving and volunteering, man. We need to serve. Serving is a calling, man. I'm ready to serve. I'm ready to do some things. And so as we continue in this sermon series today, we're going to learn to receive from him. And as we receive from him, we're going to go do like he did. And so we're going to put this sermon into action. See, all week what we're doing is we're building up because we know we're getting ready to go. This is just a summer home. We're going back to that big school over there. You know that school is big, and it takes a lot of manpower to get that stuff done over there. And so we're going to need all hands on deck in order to make that great for the people that don't know God is going to be coming here in September. And so we're getting ourselves prepared, but we need people to serve. We need people to serve. Some of you already are, so don't be, oh, Pastor, I don't need to do any extra. No, no, we ain't talking about it. We just know people that ain't serving. We need you to serve. <laughs> Get in the game. 